Hello, everybody. My name is Rodgon. I'm a teacher, a mentor, an artist, a designer, an illustrator, cartoonist, and everything in between. And today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to draw something. So seeing as we have been going through a sketchbook incredibly fast, wow, like we have like demolished this poor sketchbook. All right, let me move that lamp. So what should we learn today? What are we learning today? Um, yesterday, we had a bunch of fun trying to get to 200,000 followers, right? We are on the road still to 200,000. We have about like a thousand left to get there. So yesterday, we drew some people from stream. We learned a little bit about the face. We learned a little bit about how to draw different bodies. We talked a little bit about how to draw the Hulk as Superman and walked you guys through all the Haxel process of drawing the head we drew some more people from stream we talked about hair we talked about actual bodies how to draw necks how to draw tattooed little sexy ladies and vehicles i taught you guys how to draw the legs and we just did like oodles and doodles and doodles of fun we literally just like doodled random shit until like even vehicles and houses and stuff so today i actually want to have an actual lesson though I have my coffee, I am ready to go, and you guys know the drill, though. If you guys want to be a part of the lesson, what do you guys got to do? I only ask a couple things every time that you guys join. If you guys want to stay for the lesson, you got to like the stream. Right? You got to make sure to like the stream. And... You also, if you guys share the stream, that is how you guys help me, right? Liking the stream allows me and my ego to be all happy. Yay! And then this one helps me because this helps me reach more people. My channel. And this one helps my ego. So please do that as we are beginning our lesson and as we decide what we draw. So I have been thinking of drawing pinups today. Mostly I just want to draw some like poses and stuff like that because I want to start drawing uh, pinups and I'm going to start doing that heavily starting next sketchbook. So I am going to just choose for us and I'm going to decide on pinup poses. Now, I am not going to be using reference for these. Uh, I like to actually just develop the poses on my own and then see what I can do to refine the poses whenever I actually get uh, a chance to look at reference. So, normally pinups will come in the shape of hourglass shapes, right? So, as we develop our systems to draw characters, we need to start understanding what we are drawing in order to be able to manipulate those shapes to get the sexy poses that you guys want. It's not just about drawing like uh, big boobs and big hips. It's about understanding where those big boobs and these big hips come from. If you want to make a skinny girl, it could be the same. You just need to know where those things originate. And in order to get the most appealing characters, this is essentially all you really need to know. You need to know how to develop the rib cage and how to develop the hip bones. The rib cage is going to be a simple, simple, simple sphere with a little bit of a divot in the middle and your collarbone that looks like a V that reaches to the sides of your rib cage at the top. That is your basic premise for a rib cage. From this top part, you would have your neck your neck muscles. From here, you have the width of your arms. And then you can move on to your rib cage, uh, to your hip bones. Your hip bones for something along the lines of a pinup is going to have wider hip bones than the rib cage. And they're also going to angle in a little bit more. When you connect your hip bone to your rib cage, you get to decide what type of taper 
you want for your stomach? Do you want something to look like it's going in or do you want somebody with love handles? Right At this point, that's the stage where you choose the level of uh, soft tissue that goes in between your hip bones and your ribcage. I like to call this part the squish zone. Okay, The reason that I call it the squish zone is because that area right there is going to have most of the body fat when it comes down to bellies love handles, or in any way, shape, or form, drawing somebody with any sort of fat tissue. Okay, so that is what happens during the squish zone. All that fatty tissue gets either enhanced or it gets detailed. So that is something that needs to be kept into consideration while we are drawing our pinups. The neck as well, like I said, the neck comes out of this little area with the collarbone. So we will talk about that as well. So, as we go in into actually making female characters, we are going to keep those two aspects in consideration. We are going to go with a smaller rib cage than our hip bones, creating an hourglass shape. And then we are going to start adding details as we go along, like the head. We have our arms. And then we can start drawing our legs. Our legs are going to originate from the hip bone and they're going to extend out to our hips because our leg bone actually curves out and then comes back in. That's the reason that we get this width going from our hip. We have our hip bone and then we have the width of the actual hip, which is the width of that bone and that muscle put together. So you end up with a leg on both sides, creating your hip bones, it's already determined, rib cage, abs, let's add some, some breasts. Then from here, I get to decide what type of face I wanna do. I'm gonna draw my mask. And then I get to choose whatever hairstyle I want for this character. Uh, and same. Let's, let's draw some short hair. Some earrings. Then I'm going to connect my collarbone to my ears, creating my neck. And then I get to decide what type of eyes, what type of mouth. All that stuff comes after. Now, this is just the basic premise for a body shape of a female. Now, adding pinup aspects to it will be the thing that makes it look more like an actual pinup. Um, let's draw some feet. Um, proportions are going to be dependent on what type of pinup you're trying to achieve. Uh, you can have a pinup that's chibi, like by just drawing smaller legs, smaller arms. Uh, big rib cage. Or you can have something that's more structured like a comic book character, or you can have even motions where you have something that is 
distorted and not quite either of them. You know, well, that's just when you start stylizing things. Uh, let's make. But once you have a system for it, it becomes easy to start drawing things on top. Ugh, that looks horrible. <laughs> looks like a little fish person. Let's see if we can fix it. So if we made this the bottom line, and then we made this the mouth, and then we make that the line, add some eyelashes, and the jaw into the structure, and then the rest of the head. And then we'll make it super comic bookish. And we will eliminate half the face because of that. Yay! There it goes. Something like that. Could work. Anyways, pin up poses. So, I like to use a lot of hourglass shapes from the beginning. So, my bean bag for my for my pinups, my initial beanbag is always just going to look kind of like an hourglass, right? So it's going to have that taper in the middle, and it's going to have wide hips. So it gives me this hourglass shape. When you start doing that, and you start uh, acknowledging where your legs come from, now you can start positioning your character in any position you really want. This is going to help you a lot with your life drawing, too. Um, you're going to be able to see a bunch of poses just from understanding those elements. So whenever you start drawing things that are like in foreshortened and stuff like that, right? When you start seeing things that are like coming into the distance... you'll start seeing elements a little bit easier and you'll be able to draw them a wee bit easier as well. Uh, for shortening is going to be annoying and it's going to be tough to get through at first. Um, you're going to have to learn how to overlap shapes. And you're going to need to learn anatomy to a certain extent to be able to understand where those shapes connect. That is just something that's going to be required, and I'm not going to lie to you, it's not going to be necessarily the easiest thing for you to learn, because it's a very complicated process. But, again, no one really said that being an artist is easy, so don't always expect it to be. You need to put a lot of work in if you want to be a competent artist and always expecting there to be like a cheat code or like an easy way to do things is going to give you a false idea of what it's like to actually be a designer. So keep that in mind. There will be a point where you will be able to see this if you practice it enough. And you will be able to draw things in every single position that you want to. The moment that this comes to you, 
And the moment that it clicks, that is the moment that you need to um, really hammer down on the whole concept of it, because that is when it's starting to actually make sense. And when it starts to make sense, that is when you need to tackle that. So now let's draw like some heads because we haven't really focused on heads. Uh, for me, I like to draw my little pinups by starting with a sphere. I like to break the sphere down into two sections and the bottom part is gonna have my mask. This is gonna give me some large eyes. It's gonna give me a nice roundy nose bridge into a perfect position for my nose. I like to make my eyes nice and big on my pinups. And I like to give them a lot of expressive faces. My eyes are normally large. And they tend to have some sort of detail like highlights or something like that. So this is about as far as I draw my faces at first. From there, I know that my temple is at the edge of my eyebrow, so that's gonna be the side of my face, leading onto the top of my head, which is going to have my hair. Then from here, I know that from the top of my nose, I'm going to draw the bottom part of my mouth, or my head, like a little teardrop. That little teardrop is going to give me a midsection, and it's going to be able to give me the roundness that I need for this bottom part of the face. I also get to know where my ear is because it's going to be roughly the same angle as my eyebrows and my nose. So I know that my ear is going to be around here. I'm going to give it some piercings and stuff. Then from the bottom of my ear to my chin, that's my jaw. And this side is my cheek into my chin. So now I have a good structure. I need to have a little bit of space behind my head, behind. So I adjust my shape. And then from here, if I want to draw a mouth, all I got to do is choose two points within this shape that I drew. Two points. Connect them via a curvy line top and bottom, extend the bottom part so it looks like the top is overlapping, and then give it some lips. I can darken the top lip to make it look like it has depth, have my chin, and then I just give it hair, whatever type of hair I want to give it. So. Let's do like, I used to always really like the the hair that was always parted in the middle, like tank girls type of stuff. Like half their hair is buzzed. And then half their hair is like, like flowy. I've always liked that hairstyle. And then as you go along with your designs, you can start stylizing these in different ways. You can start angling eyes more to get like more seductiveness. You know, you can start giving them bigger foreheads, smaller noses, like start stylizing your pinups after you learn how to mold them. Start adding different looks to them. Start adding different elements. Go for different facial expressions. Uh, 
cute girls also have different facial expressions, not just the pouty lip. So play around with different facial expressions and see if that actually like works. What should we give this one hair wise? Uh, let's give her a Cleopatra. Do you work for Pixar or something? No, I don't work at Pixar. I don't work for any studio. I work for myself. I have uh, very few times in my life considered actually working for a studio. Uh, more so because I just don't believe in uh, being a little credit in the great scheme of things. I, I, I don't like using my creative skills to make someone else rich and just be a little credit in the back space of a movie. Um, I've always believed that, and I don't really um, enjoy seeing how some artists get treated. Right? Like I'm lucky enough that I actually have the the ability to hear from a lot of people. So um, it it just so happens that you know a lot of the people that seem to be the most drained are the people that get used by studios. So, you know, like, and it's not even like a negative thing. Like that is why they're paying you to do the job, right? They're paying you so that they can use your creative energy. That is essentially what you signed up for. Uh, so it's not like you, like you should feel bad for people. Like that is the reason that you went to work for them. Now, you deciding to only use your energy for them is your choice because you could always uh, go home and work on your own projects and stuff like that. But, you know, a lot of the times when that happens, you don't really have the energy to do that. You don't have the energy to go home and work on your own projects after you worked for like 50, 60, 80 hours for a different thing and all you did was draw, you are going to find yourself very, very drained if that's how you think that it's going to go. Even jobs that aren't necessarily all that creative put you in those situations. So, you know, like whenever you have an actual job doing creative stuff remember that it might like dig into what you are actually trying to do for yourself so keep that in mind nobody ever does mm -mm, let's see what, what should be what should she be doing with her arm maybe she's just carrying groceries Checking our phone. And she'll have a little heart right here. Okay, so out of out of like complete disregard for every single time, I'm gonna actually accept what's up, dude. Please don't make me regret taking this live. What do you want? What up? What's up? How you doing? 
I'm doing good. What's up? You have a question or why did you request this live? Uh, just chilling and making new friends. Okay, then I'm going to remove you from this uh, live because you are chilling, wasting bro. my time. Bye. You're just wasting my time, man. Wow. See, that is why we don't do that. People just waste time. Literally, it's just a stupid waste of time. Like every single time. Like if you're going to go live with me, have a question. Don't don't just like be like, oh, no, I don't know what I'm doing. You want to play a game? hate it it's annoying um i'm not here like this is gonna sound weird but i'm not here to be your guys's friend i'm here to be your guys's teacher and that is a very clear distinction here like i'm not aiming to be friends with everybody i just want to make sure that you guys understand what i'm teaching you um yeah so I'm not here to socialize. I'm here to teach. If I were here to socialize, I'd be like, oh, my God, how is your guys' week? Like, oh, my God, please tell me everything that happened to your puppy and like stuff like that. Like, I, I don't do that. So, so it's just funny to me. Uh, exactly. You're teaching. Yeah. Once you get comfortable enough with the concept of the hip bones and the rib cage, you can start deforming them into different elements, like different shapes, different forms to get a style more based on kind of what you want. But at first, while you're learning how to draw, don't base your things completely off a of style because you're going to essentially um, handicap yourself into only being able to draw like that. So as you go about learning how to draw, remember that it's going to take a while. It's not going to be a magical fix that you're going to just be able to draw like pinups and characters just because you took one lesson from Rodgun. Now, you're going to have to go and train your brain to be able to do these sort of things. Like, it doesn't come naturally to a lot of people. It didn't come naturally to me for a very long time. Uh, I had to drill it into my brain. And as you do that, as you put in your 10,000 hours to get a mastery at one element or another, you're going to understand that, again, it's not easy to be an artist. It's not easy to visualize these things. There's ways to make it simpler, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna be just easy. So don't expect that. Like, it's just not gonna end well for you if you think that everything is supposed to be easy and simple and come like naturally to you. You gotta work at it a lot. And, but, but the more that you work at it, the more you're going to be able to do cool things. And once you get to a point where you're really comfortable with what you do, then you move on to the next thing you need to work on. And that is how we progress as artists. Things like skirts and stuff like that, they ride the lines of your of your character's uh, perspective lines, right? So the way that you calculate drawing skirts or anything like dresses going around the character, as you find these perspective lines for your shape, And then you trace around them and you need to extend them going around so that you can get that 
sort of shape that looks like it's going around it. It's not just a line that goes up. This is going up and it's going down and it's going up again. Oh my God, your lines have so much personality and feed. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, that all comes from understanding circles though. Like this, all the little roundness and shapes that you see, it's just from understanding circles and then drawing circles inside of circles. And then eventually you get that natural curviness to them that allows you to draw things and make them look a little bit more voluminous than they probably were. Plus the fact that I've been drawing for a long time too, so. And then we'll draw some tattoos coming out from her. And then what type of shirt should we give her? Let's give her a tank top. And then let's draw some hands. She thick, yeah. I've always liked to draw my pinups with uh, extra, extra junk in the trunk. Uh, that is just my preference. <laughs> Hey, Rodgun, it's Evan. What's up, Evan? How you doing, man? Um, I'm doing great. I'm doing fantastic. How you make those expressive poses? <laughs> I am calm. I'm just confused. Why are you confused? What is confusing you, my friend? And why are you uh, aggravated? There should be no aggravations during Rodgon's classes. Just pure happiness. Mm -hmm. Let's draw somebody with heels. Draw like a little mini skirt. And we'll draw some stockings. <laughs> yeah, like the trick to being able to draw clothing really nicely is honestly just learning how your body connects. Uh, once you learn how your body connects to each other, then it's like a puzzle. It's just a puzzle. At that point, it just becomes a big puzzle piece you need to solve. And once you get to that level of visualization, that's, there's really nothing you can't not draw. That is going to come down mostly to your mental library and what you can actually imagine. Uh, it's not going to be based on your knowledge or your ability to draw something. It's going to be based more on what what can you draw? What can you come up with? These same rules apply to male bodies. Yeah, the same thing applies to a male body. Like the only difference between a pinup and a like a dude is the size of the rib cage as comparison to the hip bones. So an average dude will have pretty much no like bendy stuff or like no hourglass shape to them because the hip bones are going to be roughly the same size as the hips. So you don't really get much action there as opposed to making the hips a little bit bigger and the rib cage eh, roughly the same size, you get a little bit more 
action and it comes down to the curvature in which you get your shapes. So you end up with an hourglass shape instead of a normal standard shape like this. Now, if you wanted to go the opposite spectrum, you can make the rib cage bigger and make the hip bone smaller and you end up with superhero proportions. Okay, so that is essentially how that works. You can go the opposite way and go with a smaller rib cage, the big hip bones, and then just make someone incredibly thick. So the difference between male and female isn't necessarily very heavy. It's just the way that you apply your shapes. You use a line of action when you draw. Yeah, a lot of people use that. Like a lot of people set like a motion line. And then they try to follow what they drew with their shapes. Now, that is okay and it's used widely by a lot of people. So it's a very common way to express your positions, your shapes and stuff like that. That is a very good way of seeing it. I never really grasped the concept of it properly and it never really made sense to me, but I see a lot of people use it. So it's just another way that you guys can think about drawing your, your characters. The line of action is essentially tracing your spine and it's tracing the flow in which your whole shape is supposed to go in. So it's very cool if you know what you're looking for. If you are not aware of what you're supposed to be looking for, it becomes really confusing because then you don't really know like what you're looking at. But once you get a little bit more knowledge about like what you're actually drawing in the shape of your anatomy, then the line of action becomes a really powerful tool. But before that, before you understand construction, like a line of action is all it's going to do is going to tell you where to put things, but you're still going to just go in and add like your boxes and stuff. So it's going to be really, really weird to follow an action line when you don't really understand how to construct anything. Things might look stiff, even though you have a very fluid line, as opposed to when you start thinking about your elements like three-dimensional shapes, you just naturally end up with a lot more depth because you start seeing through your shape. So that is the difference between... Um, like, that's why I don't really necessarily use action lines. I just focus on the dynamic posing of the first shape that I draw. The first shape that I draw tends to be my torso. My torso will be in the shape of a beanbag for the most part, most of the time. Especially for pinups, because I can create the shape really, really quickly. And I can start molding my character with very little effort. Mm, let's see, let's make her sitting down. And I'm not lying to you guys when I tell you that it becomes easy whenever you find like the ability to draw these shapes. It just becomes really simple. Like it's the thing is a lot of the times, most of the time, the reason that we can't draw something like poses and angles and stuff like that is because we just don't know we're guessing. 
So it becomes really hard when you're guessing where things go. The whole time you're guessing, you don't really know what you're doing. So you're filling in that space with a lot of um, filler that comes in the form of style or copying other people's drawings or stuff like that. So even though that is good to learn at first how to do that and helping yourself like that, as you progress more into your art career, if you keep on constantly going back to that way of learning, you're only going to be able to draw as much as people show you how to draw. You're not going to be able to push the envelope yourself because you're not necessarily learning how to do it yourself. You're just learning through other people's exaggeration methods that they have come up with from learning this stuff themselves. So you are copying somebody that probably knows what I'm explaining to a expert level. So by you getting a little bit more understanding of what I'm teaching you, you are going to be able to see those people's styles a lot easier too. So it's not only going to help you develop your own skills, you're going to be able to develop other people's as well. How long have you been drawing? I've been drawing for a long time. Uh, yeah, I've been drawing for like, I, th I started in 2002. So that is 21 years. 21 years now. Uh, forehead, let's give her some bangs. Oh, now let's just give her some pull back here. Then forehead, and then we can draw the mask, but it's a little drawing, so I don't need to draw the mask. I just have to draw the features. No, no, that's just graduated high school. That was just last year. Well, you have a long way to go. If you just barely graduated high school, congratulations for graduating high school. Uh, that is uh, actually like, that's kind of really cool. Like, I'm, I'm happy for you. Let's see if sushis can turn into pinups. I think sushis can turn into pinups. The neck's a little too long in that one. We'll make it into a bracelet. Huh. So sushi's kinda, kinda. You need to adjust them a lot to get them to like look right. But you can make sushis into pinups, I guess. Uh, sushis are what I call these little shapes like this. When you do shush. Things like this help you come up with like a lot of cool poses really quickly. So I like using them, especially for my legs. And then from here, I just need to make my rib cage smaller than my hips and then connect it. And then I have the initial shaping of a female body. Wow. Interesting. I'll have to think about that a little more. Uh, draw Among Us with drip shoes. I don't even know what Draw Among Us is. Is it like the little like things like this? I think so. Yo. What ball pen am I using? I'm using a normal big pen. Uh, they're nothing special. I don't like using expensive pens. Let's see, Shredder. Right can I do muscles? Yeah. I can totally do muscles. Okay, so let me explain to you guys what muscles are on essentially in a human body but we'll make it more on like the actual like woman structure 
So we'll start with our basic shape for our rib cage and our wide hip bones in the form of a cylinder with the tapered end edges. So that being our basic shape for our body, um, yeah, that is our rib cage, our little divot, and a cylinder for our hip bones. This connects, and then you have your hourglass shape. Cool. Then from here, your muscles are going to start, let's start with our legs. Actually, no, let's start from the head up. Let's draw a head. So we have our ear, we have our hair, our cool, flowy, pin-up hair, whatever hairstyle we choose. So from the bottom of my ear, on both sides, so you got to draw through your shape a little. From the bottom of my ears to the collarbone, you're going to draw your first indication of muscles. That is going to be your neck muscles that connect to your collarbone. From the bottom of your ears, inside of this little shape, inside of your collarbone, you got to decide how wide you want your neck. I want my neck to not be that wide, so I'm going to draw a little cylinder that falls in right there. Then these become my back muscles that connect to the collarbone. Really simple, right? So now from here, what are these points right here? Well, that's going to be the top of your shoulder, like the pivoting part of your shoulder. So from here, you get to dictate how big you want your arm. I want it about that wide, so I'm going to do it like this. If you wanted a really, really skinny arm, you just draw a little circle and you draw your arm skinny. If you want your arm wide, from that point, you just make it wider and it's always going to be proportional. Congratulations, you now know where your arms come from. Now you know how to draw arms. Uh, the moment that you understand that, you can draw any arm you want coming out of this position as long as it connects back to this point. What do I mean by that? Well, if you have your collarbone and you have your hole for your arm, now you can draw any shape you want and it's gonna end up looking like a hand for some reason. And it's gonna look proper because it's coming out of the right place. Now, it could be something as silly as something cartoony, or it could be something with more anatomy. It doesn't matter at that point. It just means that you have the proper placement for your muscle now. So now you can have fun stylizing it. Woohoo! Hey, we got dumbbells. All right, let's draw a little, uh, a little happy dumbbell. Thank you. Thank you for the donation. Uh, anytime you guys donate, it just goes to buying new equipment. Um, currently, I am saving up to get a car because riding on a motorcycle all the time is a pain in the ass. So anything that you guys donate or you guys subscribe to or you guys buy with my books is going to go towards buying a car. So, um, yeah, you guys are just helping me, like, move better. Ooh, a little ice cream cone. Thank you. I'm not going to draw all the donations, by the way. I'm just like entertaining some of them because they're cool. Well, then I might as well donate more. Yeah, if you guys are nice, uh, like honestly, like anything you guys donate just goes to new equipment. Uh, you know, like I'm horrible at being um, selective. Uh, I'm like, what I mean by that is like, I can't, I find it really hard to be exclusive with people so anytime that anybody subscribes or anything they want exclusivity to content and the reason that i started this channel to do free artwork for people is because i hate exclusivity so that kind of just uh goes back and like it, it just does not make it so it makes it a very conducive reason for you to want to subscribe to me right but at the same time like i said i'm not doing this for money so it's nice whenever i get anything from you guys but it's not something that I'm constantly going to be asking for. So it's just appreciated when you guys do. 
So let's talk about a little bit more about uh, the actual body structure. So once we have our rib cage and we know where our arms are going to locate it from, then how do we break the arm into different, you know, like shapes? Now we are going to have our rib cage, our collarbone, our arm. So our arm is going to be split technically into two parts. It's going to be split into from the top you're going to have your your shoulder. Oh my god. Oh dear god, you are donating a lot. Uh uh thank you. Holy shit. You sound like 130 little roses. Um Thank you. Uh, not like appreciate it heavily, but I hope that it's not like putting you out or something because that's like that's something that always concerns me. Like I don't like like honestly, I, I it it makes me uncomfortable like saying that people should donate and stuff. Like I'm just not a money driven person, but I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, when we have our arm, we're going to have our shoulder and our bicep and our tricep in one section. And then we're going to have our forearm and the palm of our hand in the other. That is roughly the dimensions in which we have to divide our arm. Uh, the fingers come on top of this and they are separate from this measurement. So we have our forearm into our wrist into our palm, and then the top part has our tricep and our bicep. So once we understand those two points, then we can start applying that to simplified drawings. So if I have two parts, the shoulder and the bicep in one part, I can draw it like that. Literally, using that little divot, we can draw a circle for our shoulder and then have our shoulder come out from there. Now, putting that into different perspectives is sometimes a little bit difficult for people. Um, but that is going to consist of understanding how to overlap cylinders. Learning how to do things like this is just a matter of understanding how to do exercises like this. Take two circles, make them longer, right? And then slowly overlap them and change the angles of them. So you see what happens. And then this combined with your knowledge of anatomy, which is a little harder to represent because it's very complicated shapes, allow you to be able to transform your basic shapes into this. But you need knowledge, you need the knowledge of anatomy to be able to do that. So if you don't do that, like if you don't take that knowledge of anatomy into consideration, it's going to be really hard for you to draw this. Not saying that you can't draw just basic shapes and get that same similar result, right? You're going to get a cool result as long as you just learn the general shape of it. But in order to actually get like the really cool drawings that some of us want with like all the detail and all the muscle structures and stuff like that, like in order to get all those drawings with every muscle fiber and every single indentation, all those drawings become incredibly easier to draw or even possible to draw when you actually learn how your muscles are structured. Like it's really hard to draw that when you don't really have an understanding of how the muscles work. And that is why we normally take the time to learn anatomy as artists. Um, we learn anatomy so we can learn these placements, not necessarily so we can draw all the muscles. Uh, Understanding where they connect, the placement of the elements is more important than learning how to actually draw them. Like learning how to just place positioning of the legs in the right place can make it so you can draw legs out of anything.
anything that you draw that comes out of there, the same thing happens with legs. Like anything you draw can be anatomically correct. It could be stylized. As long as you understand where it connects to the body, it's going to look proper. And that is a huge part of character design that nobody ever really explains. Like once you understand where something is placed on the body, let's say abs, right? Like if I know where my abs go every single time, then I can stylize those in any way I want. Yay, thank you. Can you draw shoes from the front? Well, shoes, eh, I guess we can draw shoes, why not? So feet and shoes are correlated. So if you're gonna draw your feet, the easiest way to draw your feet is to draw a big cylinder coming down for your shin into the bottom part of your foot. Draw the bottom part of your foot, like the sole of your shoe touching the ground. And let me explain why this is the easiest way to do it. Because when you have your cylinder, coming from your, I don't know, your, your shin or whatever, like your ankle or your thigh, or let's just call that the thigh. We have the thigh, we have the shin, we have this cylinder that has perspective, right? It has perspective points and it's going to have a bottom. So that bottom line is going to be where it touches the ground. You can just expand that bottom line that little perspective, just make it bigger, make it a novel, and then just give it depth. And now you have feet. You can do the same thing for the calf too. Take that perspective line, expand them a little bit back and connect them to the back of the thigh. And now you have calves and feet in one show. So cylinder to the bottom, Expand that bottom and then give yourself some depth and you have yourself a foot. And on top of that, you just learn how to draw calves too. So if we draw it from the front, we're gonna have the bottom of our foot and then we're gonna have some volume to our foot this is gonna have perspective lines giving me the roundness of my shoe, which is going to give me the sides of it. It's gonna help me figure out where the tongue of it's gonna go. It's gonna wrap around some clothes probably, going around. And this front is going to, I'm just gonna draw like some converse or something. I am from, uh, I'm from San Diego, California, but I'm living in Tijuana, Mexico, and I am originally from Mexico City. So again, feet, thigh, cylinder down to the foot, figure out the perspective of that cylinder, expand that perspective of that cylinder to create the bottom part of your foot, and then give it depth. And then you have yourself feet. That is a very simple way of seeing it. Now, another way that you guys can see it is a triangle. You guys can also bring down that like cylinder, create a little triangle, and then use that triangle to create your depth. If you need toes, just give it toes instead. And with a little bit more knowledge of anatomy, you'll end up drawing Feet, actually quite wet. Uh, shoes come from the same stem. You can draw shoes by just giving things volume and then drawing through your shape. Seems so easy to be so difficult to do. Um, the thing is, once you start visualizing things like I'm telling you, like this, this could be done in like a quadrillion different ways. Like it doesn't matter how you visualize it. If you visualize it with spheres, you can visualize it with spheres. If you visualize it with boxes, you can visualize it with boxes. You can visualize this in a lot of different ways. 
and still get the same sort of result. The trick is understanding the shape in one way very well, like understanding completely how to do something in one way. Uh, let's say that you only know how to draw faces by drawing a happy face. Okay, that is the only skill you have. Well, just knowing this, you can modify those things inside a little bit to get different characteristics. Right? You can move, as long as you understand those elements, you can move them around. Well, once you start adding a little bit more detail to these things, they start giving you different character designs. And once you start learning different ways to render, even changing the size of the eyes can change the design drastically. So as you learn to draw your things, learn to modify what you've drawn so that you can get a bigger range of things, right? If you only know how to draw circles, perfect. Just draw things with circles. Just draw circles all over, just all circles. Everything there is based on a circle, right? If you just like drawing squares, just draw squares. But learn the positioning for your things. Like both of these could easily be just thought of as whatever shape we draw and then draw a little mask inside and then make all your features whatever shape you want. Circles, boxes. See what I mean? So it's a matter of just understanding it one way and then applying more detail to it, but just knowing that that initial way of thinking about it is actually the way that is more accurate. Um, one exercise that I want all of you guys to do, and this is something that's going to trip a lot of you guys up. Right? You guys will realize that you guys do not understand perspective as much as you guys think. And I would love, 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 love for you guys to actually post your results on this. Um, it's a simple exercise, but it's actually quite challenging for most people. So we are going to do this. Our exercise for today, and please feel free to tag me at, at, at Rod Gun, the artist on Instagram or TikTok. So if you guys tag me with your videos of you guys doing this, would be great. And please, if you guys tag me and you guys find that you guys have a weakness, please let me know. Like, I would love to be like, oh, it was hard here. Why was it hard here, Rod? Or like, oh, I got through all of it, but I didn't quite get this. Can you explain to me? And I'll try to answer you guys' questions. But here we go. The exercise is going to consist of you drawing a happy face in the middle of a page. Okay, you're going to draw a line in the middle. The happy face can be whichever way you want. You're going to take this little happy face and you're going to turn it into a three-dimensional object by drawing, instead of this line, you're going to draw a circle inside of that line, creating a guideline that you can move. So now if we draw that to this side, we're going to draw the midline a little bit that way. And therefore, we have a three-quarter view of our face going that way. We're going to do the same thing this way. We're going to draw a circle inside of our circle looking this way. And we're going to map out those two, three little lines looking this way. So now we have a head looking in three different directions. We can do that all the way to the edge by drawing that little extra circle a little bit closer to the edge every time. If you're wondering if you know perspective, this is a good way to measure it out. Understanding how to rotate a simple face with no detail in every single direction is going to be very helpful.
you can give it a secondary line for the top and the bottom looks so you understand where that line goes and then start going in between. Now you guys will understand why this is gonna be challenging to you. If you don't understand basic perspective or how to draw through your shape, this is going to be incredibly hard for you. That means that all you gotta do is draw more circles inside of circles. That is going to be your remedy to be able to do that. And then map out shapes. Like if, whenever you draw your circles, map out your points so you understand where things are supposed to go. And when you go into more detailed stuff, you'll know that it's in the right place. You got to walk. You got to crawl before you can walk. A lot of people jump to the conclusion of going from step one to step 20 and they don't even realize what they're doing. Like, so do this exercise, see if you can push at extremes and then start adding one detail at a time, right? Start adding the eyes. See if you can draw the eyes going in different directions. Then add the nose, then add the mouth. And then you guys will be able to pinpoint exactly where it is that you're drawing inconsistencies happen. Why is it hard for you to draw a chin from this angle and not from this angle? What's the difference between drawing an even higher one And how does that apply to my shapes? At what point do I start seeing the bottom of my head? At what point do I start seeing the top of my head? Okay, so that is essentially what you are going to want to do. Now, I would love, 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 love to see what you guys come up with, regardless if it comes out good or not. I, like knowing what you guys struggle with is essentially the only way that I know how to apply new lesson plans and adjust lesson plans that I have. So do me a favor. Some of you, if you guys feel inclined to, please tag me. I'll duet you. And then I will print out the things that I see wrong. Like I will point out through explanations and drawings where I see that you guys have like, gone off a little bit. So That'll be really fun for you guys to interact with me as well. That is your exercise for today. Hope you guys learned a little bit today. We talked a lot about anatomy and female, uh, essentially like anatomy and perspective and uh, how and what to look at when we're looking at pinup poses. So then we went into more like anatomy and stuff like that, which is really necessary when you're actually trying to draw something like a girl uh, that's like doing anything appealing. You will eventually get to the point where you can stylize your things any way you want. But at first, get used to just being able to see the shapes for what they are, right? If you're not able to see the shapes and know where they connect, that is your step one. That is step one through 10. And that is probably step 15 through 55 as well. You know, it's just that important to actually understand where your body parts move, where they connect, where they go from, where they flow, where they rotate. And that is why we learn anatomy. We don't learn anatomy necessarily to learn how to draw every muscle. We learn anatomy so we can understand where the muscles go, where they connect, how they move, how they pivot, how they connect to other body parts, where little squishy parts happen, uh, where hard parts and like things that don't move like pressure against our system and our bodies. Now, uh, it's going to be a bunch of learning how things just move in general. 
And that is a much more important lesson to understand than learning how to draw the muscle fibers for your like arm. So, hopefully you guys learned a little bit today. If I did help you guys out, please let me know. And please um, make sure to go subscribe to my YouTube channel. We are growing actually remarkably fast. We have grown like 15,000 followers in the last month or so. So if we can go ahead and keep that up, I am going to get to that uh, $100,000 subscribers uh, in, or like subs in no time. And then I'll get my plaque and I'll be happy and then I'll be a happy, happy, happy bunny. <laughs> so if you guys want to help me with that, please feel free to go subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's a bunch of really cool things for you guys for to uh, you to like look at. Hundreds and hundreds of videos like this to teach you really little tiny things around the world that will help you in general be a better artist. So hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Tuesday. And... I'm going to leave you guys with a couple nice messages so that you guys can go out into the world with a happy, happy brain and a happy, happy mentality. So at the end of the day, I want you guys to go out there into the world and I want you guys to go love a little, show the world a little kindness, even if it is just to yourself. Make sure that today is a totally awesome Tuesday. I want you guys to go out there and live a little. Living a little means going outside and actually enjoying what life has to offer to you, good or bad. Big experiences help generate inspiration, so make sure to go out and live as big as you can with then your means and be happy, right? So go out and live a little bit. I want you guys to go outside and I want you guys to go laugh a little bit. Watch such show that you love uh Go hang out with your best friends, your bestie, or just go, uh, you know, enjoy something that you love so you guys can get a little bit of laughter. And then at the end of the day, the only way to get better as an artist is to go outside and draw a lot. So with that being said, have a wonderful day, everybody. Thank you for being my sketch buddies. If for more resource, please join my YouTube channel so you guys can get access to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of more videos like this. And uh, at the end of the day, I'll see you guys tomorrow or later on today for another lesson. Thank you guys so much for being my drawing buddies, and I will see you guys soon. Take care. Love you all.